it's very important for us to do good scientific research. We actually check to see whether this worked. We make sure we have an impact. People will roll up their sleeves and they will just um, do whatever is necessary to meet our mission. When I think of the history of Hope Lab, I think most profoundly of the story of the PAMs. Our board chair and founder, Pam Omidyar, and our founding president, Pamela Cato. It really, the, the vision and the compassion and the intellect these two women brought to bear in this effort is phenomenal. I said, wouldn't it be great if you could um, have a video game where kids with cancer could just blast the cancer cells? when we realized that we could fund this game fully ourselves and not worry about making a profit and really just do it for the kids, uh, that's when Hope Lab started to come together. The game is a uh, 3D shooter that takes place inside the human body. Uh, you take on the role of the microscopic yet intrepid nanobot named Roxy. You are armed with a chemo blaster and uh, rockets with medicine and your mission is to fight cancer and cancer-related illnesses like infections on a cellular level. Well, one of the ways I describe this game is it's a cross between Tomb Raider and Fantastic Voyage, kind of a, a lone wolf uh, out to fight a tremendous enemy but inside the human body. One of the challenges that we faced in developing this game was really trying to mesh the research that we were putting into the game up front along with the game developers and saying, hey, you guys have to communicate. We need all the scientific information to go into the game. You know, we'll help you translate it to put it in the game. And the game developers are saying, hey, we want a fun, cool game. What is this stuff? It has a great potential to, to impact uh, adolescents in particular who uh, seem to have a lot of their interests focused on consumer electronics and on video games. It was exciting, you know, we do all these video games and the work is fun, but sometimes it's kind of pointless. I mean, there's no higher thing. It's just like immediate sort of entertainment and then it's forgettable, but this one felt, uh, this one felt a little deeper. To watch sort of these two tribes come together, um, the video game folks and the scientists, see that there was no common language there was no, really no common life experience. I think we've learned the importance of really sticking to our guns and not compromising on the science and not compromising on the quality of the, the game that we wanted to produce. It's actually a source, how you can learn how, what chemo is and what cancer cells are. And you learn about chemo and radiation and how it's important to take your antibiotics. It's a great source how to learn. Well, one of our values at Hope Lab is to involve our end customers at every step of the production process. And I would say that goes for research and also the game. We did keep the patients involved during the development process so that we could get a better feel for you know, if it was really speaking to them or not. When we had kids come to the, to the office and test the game for us, you could see how their eyes just like went like this and, and we're like, oh my god, this is much better than I expected or this is actually fun. Or they will say things like, oh my God, that happened to me. We had one who was working with us, Evan DeSantis, and we got very attached to him. He was extremely helpful. He was involved with us towards the end of the development process and he passed away around then and he didn't get to see the final game. So we were very sad about that. They got to the point where they said, okay, we can't give you any more chemo, and um, you probably have like a year left. And then we had the question, what do you do? You know, you have a year left, and um, he had been fighting for two years. That was a big problem. What do you do when you only have a year left? And then we went into the clinic one day and found a Hope Lab person saying we need uh, someone to test the computer games. We started to figure out how we were going to incorporate Evan into the project. He was really interested in games. He was just a funny guy, you know, he was uh, 
just uh, he was a great guy and, and, and the type of person that we would hire as an intern, you know, at our studio. He just thrived on it. The Hope Lab just gave him that feeling. They empowered him so much that he just came alive when he came here. Well, one of the scenes uh, going through that kind of where he had some input was just uh, on the seizures. The description of a seizure, he, he said the, the graphic uh, representation of what the seizure was like to, to someone, um, he said they, they nailed it. But by the time he was done with them explaining what they, yeah. they needed to do, that, that that is the feeling one gets when one is going through a, a seizure. His, his motto was uh, yeah. carpe diem, which is Latin for seize the day. And uh, he really lived that, to see him uh, actually do it and, and do it in a way that created something of value for other people, like the remission game was, um, was you know, touching, inspiring, and um, um, really made us feel that he had left, you know, a, a little bit of legacy in the world. The study that we did really was uh, sort of an effort to see whether remission was going to impact the kinds of uh, thoughts and feelings and behaviors that we know are important for the well-being of, of kids with cancer. We were the first large-scale trial of this type, and it was extremely rigorous. So if it didn't work, we would know that for sure. Many times when you talk about this study, people are like, how, how is it possible that you enroll 375 people in a year? That's unheard of. I think it's possible to be scientific um, in the same way that we're scientific when we evaluate the effects of new therapeutic regimens or evaluate other t sorts of cancer control interventions. I was very concerned that if the scientific studies were done correctly, that it might not give us the results we were hoping to see. Well, the study showed that if you play this game called remission, in the midst of your cancer treatments, your quality of life can actually improve. You can learn about cancer, you can get control of your illness, you can manage it better. I do have to say I was surprised that the, that the clinical data was, was so strong. The kids in this study were confronting one of the most threatening health scenarios imaginable. And what remission did was not only help support their psychological well-being, but uh, their medical treatment as well. I did believe in Hope Lab. I just didn't think our hypothesis was going to be proved correct. And so I was the skeptical one, and I'm very happy I was proven wrong. That's what science is all about. I think we learned a tremendous amount, both in creating the game itself and actually also in testing the game. I think one of the things that we learned is that video games can be used for positive effect in young people. We had good health outcomes as a result of the rational engineering of this game. And that's an incredible insight. And we actually did not know that was possible until we both created the game and tested the game and analyzed the findings. Now that we have our, our first product, if you will, the remission game, it really gives us something exciting and visual to talk about. The game has been received positively everywhere. Uh, people are enthusiastic about the fact that we have done this. Every time the game gets written about or we have a broadcast piece about it, um, um, we certainly get a whole influx of new interested people logging on to see um, where they can get the game. I mean, if I could create cures, then, you know, I would do that in a, in a heartbeat. But what we can do is, when they're facing the challenge of, of a physical or, or mental illness, we can help them be stronger. We can help them and their families cope better with their disease and give them a sense of control over their disease. And I think we can work together with, uh, you know, other aspects of, of treatment um, to make them have happier lives. We um, set the mission early on broadly enough so that we could begin thinking about um, what would be the projects after remission. Some of the other diseases that we're looking at in addition to cancer, obesity, sickle cell disease, autism, major depressive disorder, we will not achieve our mission if we don't have ways to really understand what's going on in the lives of these young people. This was our first sort of attempt at, at, at proving this this hypothesis we had. And now we know so much more. And now we can put even, even a better standard of science to it and come up with even cooler interventions for, for young people with chronic illness. And so I'm very excited about, about that potential.